So in today's episode, I'm going to reveal to you the true cost of what I believe it's going to cost me to launch my business and YouTube channel in 2020 and how that affected my decision to bootstrap my launch. So before we can investigate whether bootstrapping is the right kind of course of action for you to take in your business launch, um, you kind of really need to know what it is and what that mean, what that term means in the world of entrepreneurship and launching a business. And essentially, it comes down to the fact that you are choosing to launch a business without any investment, any outside funds, out any loans. Um, basically, you're building the business as it grows from nothing with no financial huge lump sums to basically get the ball rolling for you. There are lots of pros and cons for working and operating this way. One of the advantages is that you basically get to own 100% of your own business. You, you learn more about your business and the market that you're entering because you have a lot of trial and error. But obviously the downside of that is that you then have a lot of um, wasted time, possibly energy. And of course that can sort of create a bit of a negative spiral going downwards um, away from your goal. So there are lots of reasons for you to basically sort of plan out and map whether bootstrapping is the right business path for you. So I'm choosing it is because launching a YouTube channel is an unknown parameter. I don't know how long it's gonna take me. Now I might have chosen a goal of four and a half months. I don't know until I've gone through that process. There are YouTubers that have less demands on their time, manage it in two or three months. And there are YouTubers out there that are doing it for five years before they still start to see any traction. And so one of the biggest reasons I've decided to bootstrap it is because I have got a part-time job at the moment and that is affording my lifestyle. And I've got a little bit of spare money each month to be able to invest in nurturing this channel from zero to hopefully the monetized status and then onwards from there. <laughs> basically meant that I needed to work out whether that spare bit of money each month was going to be sufficient or not in supporting this channel because there's no point halfway going down the, the, the process and realising I can't do X, Y, Z because I haven't got the money to spend on ABC. So obviously because you haven't got this big lump sum and you're choosing this bootstrapping uh, a process to launch your business, it means you have to get really, really creative on how you're going to then market your business and promote it and get your sort of word out there about what it is that you do and who it is that you support and so forth. And that's where your guerrilla marketing ca uh, campaigns or tactics come in. And basically it's, it's a term used for basically free advertising and how you're going to promote your business. These days we've obviously got access to uh, social media and then there's the whole viral marketing co concept. How do you get to make a post or a pin or a tweet or whatever it is that your strategy is go viral. So as a new business startup myself, not wanting to basically bang out this paid advertising campaign to launch my channel, which is what I would have done to launch a product or something like this in the past, I'm obviously having to think a little bit more creatively as well. And I'm coming up with a whole list of strategies to basically guerrilla market my business on a digital environment. And I will be sharing that with you in a few episodes. But if it is something that you can do, then you will be better off in the long term because you haven't got to suddenly stop or answer to somebody else. Say for example, you took a, a business loan or an investment in from like an angel investor to launch your business and uh, it's Monday morning and this angel investor wants to know an update, for example, gives you a call, then you kind of have to stop track, have a discussion and the outcome of that discussion might be that he wants you to pick up the pace on your marketing or pick up the pace on your product launch deadline or whatever it is that you're doing and that not might not be something that's realistic for you in your business, but now you're having to answer to an outside party purely because they wanna see a return on their investment quicker and there are factors affecting their lives. So 
there are lots of things to consider and obviously if you go down the route of using loans or credit cards these all are going to incur interest which is basically dead money money that you're having to then throw away on using a loan and you don't know how long you're going to need that loan for i mean you might be able to go and get maybe a loan on your house i'm not saying that you do that but maybe you could go and get a lump sum or you've got some savings even that will maybe afford you a lifestyle for a year and that's great if you can get your channel or your business functioning inside that time to return a profit to not only repay that loan but also you know supply you with an income that's absolutely fantastic but my channel is all about supporting and empowering solopreneurial success and realistically most solopreneurs generally don't have that amount of money available to them they often end up in the solopreneur world out of um chance like through redundancy and realizing they just want to work for themselves or it's something that they've planned to do but then they're going to be living off of savings and there's always going to be something external influencing what they do with that money so if you can find a way to keep the status quo of your life environment moving forwards as it is now, whilst you put something into place on, I was gonna say the sideline, then obviously you've got more of a chance to keep pushing that barrier back before you have to make that commitment and make that business pay for you. If you're not needing to take a wage straight away from your business, it means you're not starving your business of cash flow. And the last thing you wanna wanna do is put yourself in a point or a position whereby you've got this fantastic business, you're getting really good feedback from all your clients, but you just can't operate because you can't pay the supplier that you need to be able to get in the, the materials that you want to be able to then service the clients you've currently got on your books because you've got no cash to operate with. And so I think most of the businesses that you see that fail, most of the high street chains, somewhere along the lines, it's not just about the profit that's being returned, it's about the money that they have in the business at any given moment in time to be able to function and operate. So cash flow is a big, big, big um, sort of point that I'm, I've got an awareness in my business launch right now so that I put myself in a position whilst bootstrapping this that I don't starve my business and depend on my cash flow to survive. <laughs> If you think what I'm saying so far makes sense, could you just give me a, a big bootstrapping word or comment below just so that I can kind of get a little bit of feedback to see how I'm going with my videos and let's get on with my analysis. Okay, so as you can see on the screen behind me, um, I've got an Excel spreadsheet, which basically is a very sort of basic feasibility study. It's not sort of penny perfect in any way shape or form but it is an exercise that I have done to basically uh, work out for myself if bootstrapping was a realistic path for me to proceed down and so basically this is how I've gone about it now I am sure there are other people out there that will say I haven't done this or I haven't done that so what you need to do is obviously take this concept and think for your own business and your environment and what it is that you do to see if this works for you. So the first thing I did is I started off by working out my equipment costs. Now, in all honesty, I'm really quite lucky here because I am a website developer. I'm building a app at the moment as well. I'm sort of toying with mobile app game design. I have always built digital marketing sales funnels and done anything basically in the digital creative industries, technologies, type environment. So I've got really quite a nice, powerful computer. Um, I've got nice monitors. I've even got a digital SLR. In fact, actually it's around here somewhere. There we go. I've even got a nice digital SLR, but the camera itself is quite an old model. So with regards to equipment, coming back to this spreadsheet right now, the only two things on there that I have thought that might be um, a cost to me is obviously, as you can see, this is quite an empty, space and I haven't really done lots with my environment and I think that's letting me down so there will be some sort of cost when I figure out what I want to do but I'll do that as a whole entire episode in its own right in due course and obviously um, my microphone on my iPhone I have already discovered from a few trial and errors that although my iPhone is picking up crystal clear 
it does sound a little bit tinny to me and although I've been playing in Adobe's audition trying to sort of tweak it a little bit I think just purchasing a small mic that will go into my iPhone will help really resolve a lot of that issue for me and save some time. The next thing um, I've done if I move up my spreadsheet is my software costs. Now I am a digital girl in that sense or a digital woman. I, I literally live with a software. Um, it's the sort of pretty much biggest cost I think for my business operations. Now I think I've only just started to scratch the surface. So, so far I'm up to using my Adobe Creative Suite. I've got the full suite. I can't even spell it, sorry, creative. Let's just create that. And um, I've got the full suite. I am paying for a monthly at the moment on a direct debit. So I've basically put in the monthly fee and calculated it by 12. Obviously, there's a little tip here for you guys to work out as well. You need to put this in based on how you actually are paying for it. Yes, if you bought the annual license, it will be cheaper. But in this case, that would throw my finances out because I'm not currently doing that. Um, I need to, but I'm not. Uh, so basically, here's just a process that you need to go through. So my Adobe Suite active campaign, just to get the ball rolling at the moment, I've got the basic plan, but I've already realized it's not gonna do some of the things that I want. So I do know that I'm gonna have to upgrade that. But for the moment, as it's a cost that I know I've already paid out for, I've put that on there. Fame Themes is the company that I use. It's by um, the actual uh, theme for my WordPress website that I always use is OnePress. I absolutely love it. Been using it for about six years, I'm gonna guess. Um, these guys are great. It's a, I think they're a US company. It's in US dollars. So I've converted that back. I know it's a more if you was to go and purchase right now, but because I've been a client for so long, I, I've got a different payment plan that I think than what they're advertising at the moment. So uh, watch this space because I'm going to have a whole course on how to do your own WordPress website to save you so much money coming up in the summer months. So watch that. Um, also, I on us my website hosting. Um, at the moment, I think I pay it monthly, so that's just calculated to an annual fee. I pay my uh, SSL certificate annually. Envato is my stock library resource. I, as I said a minute ago, I am building a point and click 3D game, or I'm trying to. It's my first sort of foray, as it were, into this area. So a lot of my 3D um, items for my, my game are used from Envato and also the music, background music on these videos. So they are a must for me as well. And again, if I was to buy an annual license, I'm sure I'd be saving myself money. I've recently upgraded to actual exchange because I had to rebuild my PC back in November 2019, so about four or five months ago, and lost a lot of my my calendar functionality and things that I'd got planned and mapped out because I wasn't in the in the cloud in that sense with exchange. I was just using the Outlook and connecting it through to the Office program. So that's a whole video in its own right. But essentially, I've got Microsoft Office to pay for. Antivirus software, I think it's about three pound, but I've put in a fiver because I haven't been bothered to go and look the exact cost. Uh, TrueBuddy, so I've bought the basic plan at the moment, but that probably will be upgraded. And I've spent a tenner on keywords everywhere because I've been using these guys for ages and ages, long before they decided to start uh, making it a monetized platform. So there's some costs. So already I'm up to just about sort of 750. I should imagine 800 pound is probably more realistic on my software costs to operate in a year. Then I've got some what I've called my ad hoc fees. Now I've got a laptop that my girls broke uh, playing Roblox because that's what kids do, banging the key. So I could probably have taken it apart and fixed it. It's not something I enjoy doing. So I was a bit lazy and I sent it off to a guy and I think he's gonna cost me about 60 quid or something to fix it, I don't, I don't know. So I've just put in a little bit of a, an estimate there for some repairs and I have loads of domain names. In fact, I need to get rid of a whole bunch of them. Most of them are cheap, like the .co.uk's and .com's, which are just a couple of quid ago. But obviously, like this channel, I'm using .media. Like my forthcoming membership program will be on a .club. So some of those uh, sort of global top level domain names are a little bit more expensive. So I've put in about a hundred pound budget there as well. And again, this is just to give me a bit of a ballpark figure to see how realistic it's gonna cost me for this bootstrapping process and to see if I could do this. Moving 
down, I've got a couple of wish list items that I know that I'm going to be paying out for. One of the biggest tactics I have discovered from doing my research on YouTube is that people suggest that you need to translate and put a, a script audio script with your videos and I don't want to be sitting there doing it I probably will do the first few to save myself some money but at a um, dollar per minute and most of my minutes most of my videos will be about sort of 10 15 minutes long I've kind of worked out a budget I don't think it's even going to close I think it's going to be more than that but again I've got a costing in there and I do know that I want to upgrade for the Yoast SEO premium and video tools to help my website when I get that launch so they're going to be cost and then comes down to the nitty gritty, the wages. Now, obviously, everybody goes into business to earn money for themselves. They have bills to pay, a roof to put over the head. I have taken the tactic of costing in at the moment into my sort of year one projection of what it is that my business needs to earn. My time, and I have got a whole time audit video coming up uh, in a few episodes, I've split my time based on the type of tasks that I do. Now, I've already calculated from this tactic about two months ago that I am able to spend 35 hours a week dedicated to my YouTube channel whilst doing a full-time job and being mum. And it is going to be like really sort of bone breaking, but I don't intend to do that amount of investment, time investment for years and years and years. It's just while I build inertia. So I've put down as a 35 hour working week, my time based on the sort of social admin, the virtual assistant type tasks that I can easily outsource, tasks that I will be doing, but what I would pay somebody else to do when I am ready to pass or delegate that over at a sort of a 15 pound an hour rate. I know from my own personal experience of being a mum, if I was to do a shout out on my Facebook page right now of some digitally minded, savvy, uh, local freelance mums that want some work that they can do from home that I can sort of train and nurture up to do work the way that I want them to do it I know I could pay 15 pound an hour and find some quite nice abled ladies in the local area so that's why I've gone with that rate and I also checked out on people per hour what the current rate was going to be for outsourcing all my video editing the ranges were from about 20 to 50 pounds so I've kind of taken a mid-range of, of about 30 might be a little bit on the on the short side i think realistically maybe a budget of 40 pounds an hour but i didn't want this to be unrealistic so at the moment i've done 15 hours a week of editing so that's five hours per video for three videos i publish a week and um, hopefully i'll speed that up as well as time goes on i'll know and that's given me a costing there as well and that's also one of the other benefits i want to say about why you should bootstrap your business because you actually get to learn a lot more behind scenes of what it takes to produce whatever it is that you are delivering in your business and services so if i had a big pot of cash right now i would instantly have just outsourced this video editing because it's the biggest time commitment out of my entire business and it's a task that although I can do, I don't particularly enjoy it. I mean, I don't mind it. It's just not what I get excited about doing. Um, so therefore, I probably, if I had access to a big pot of cash right now, have just made the decision to about source that. But now obviously having to go through the motions myself, it does mean that I learn a lot more about how my business operates and functions. And I think that will actually give me a lot more food for thought in the future as I develop and grow and scope my business. <music> And then finally, we've got an operational budget down the bottom here. I basically have put in a grand or a thousand pounds for other unaccounted other expenses. Like I said to you, this doesn't necessarily mean it's a perfect feasibility cost costing right now. There's going to be stuff I've not thought of. Um, I already know that I'm going to need a digital diary for when I start booking in um, sales calls for people, when I start doing my, my membership program and consulting and helping people. So that's going to be a fee. I haven't made any... Uh, allowances for things like merchant fees whether I go down PayPal Stripe or another provider they're gonna have fees I've got no costs for that and um, travel costs like I'm gonna go up to the expo for the photography show in a couple of weeks time I've got no costings in for that when I go to other networking events or expos in the UK there's a couple of marketing ones taking place in London I think before the month is out as well so I've got no costings in for that. So I've given myself a ground. It's probably a bit small, but I just needed a figure in there for now just to give me something to work with. And I've also put a £5,000, no matter what I do in my business, by the end of the year, I want to try and retain 
£5,000 as like kind of working capital or operational budgets for my business. <laughs> I've got to and this has basically given me a financial target of 47,000 it was just short of 48,000 so let's say 50,000 is my budget or not my budget sorry is my financial goal for an income or revenue before tax national insurance and all other fees that I have to pay out for my working gross income into my business by the end of my first trading financial year which will be April through to April <laughs> I then needed to work out how financially feasible this is to then fund as a bootstrapping task. So the first thing I did was then take out my wages because I'm still paying myself at the moment from a part-time job. So I don't actually need to take a wage directly right now from my business, but obviously having costed it in means that at some point I'm aiming towards swapping and I will have built in the parameters needed to be able to pay myself. And then also down here, I have taken out my operational budget and costs because right now they are all plans for year two. It's something I haven't actually got to pay out for right now in day one. So I've taken that out, which meant it left me with just under £3,000 worth of fees that I have to find to bootstrap this business, which if you're good at maths, um, basically divided by 12, the actual figure was £243 a month, roughly, I need to be able to budget or bootstrap and afford to get this business up and running. So based on my part-time job, the fact that I don't have a mortgage, I've only got girls and like utility bills to pay for, I know that what I'm earning will be able to afford me that amount of money free. It'll be a bit tight. Um, I'm not going to lie, a few of the luxuries and a few of the meals out and treats that we have at the end of the month when payday comes along will be sort of a bit more sparse. But it does mean that I will be able to cash flow this business, whether it takes me four months, six months, a year, 18 months, I don't know. But it does mean that I haven't got to put any demands on demanding a wage right now. It does mean that I haven't got to cash flow, starve my business. And bootstrapping is a feasible outcome for me, which is why I have decided to do this analysis and explain how I got to this decision in my business launch. Don't forget to hit the subscribe, stay notified, and if you do think this video is gonna help someone, share it with them, please. Uh, uh, don't forget, I'm also available to speak to you guys in other platforms as well. So um, I do have uh, what I call the Solopreneurs Club. Uh, it's a Facebook group. I will put the link below in the description so you can go find it. I also use the hashtag Ask McCall Media, so hashtag Ask McCall Media on Instagram and Twitter, any of your questions that you want me to cover. And that's it from me. I hope you really enjoyed this uh, video and I will see you on the next one. Check out some of the links of the other videos as and when I produce them. I will be putting them below. Bye bye for now. Take care.